Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Everybody say amen. Everybody say Father, that you take us out of self and into your spirit right now, Father. Father, we once again come to you as humble as we know how thanking you for everything that has been said and done thus far right now, Father, in our lives right now, Father. We thank you, Father, for where we have come, Father. And we thank you for where you are taking us next right now, Father. For it is not the destination, Father, but the journey along the way right now, Father. Too many of us are looking at other people and their finished product right now, Father but not looking at the journey that it took to get there right now, Father. For, <laughs> Lord, just walk with us. Just talk with us. We need you and we cannot do without you right now, Father. You speak to our hearts each and every day of our lives, Father, through, through your word right now, Father. That's why we must teach the word. That's why we must tell many women, boys, and girls about the gospel. Because how else can they hear without a preacher? How else can they hear without a teacher? So we thank you for the word that you have given us, Father. That we not only just read these words, but be living testimonies of the word. Thank you in Jesus' name. So let's go ahead and get started, brothers and sisters, with today's word. And this is coming out of the book of Proverbs. Solomon was the wisest man living during this time period. I and mean, it's only one reason why that he was so wise. It's because he asked God for wisdom. So brothers and sisters, I have definitely mentioned this before at my local church. God is asking you a question. What do you want? If God were to come up to you and ask you, what do you want? What will your answer be? I want more friends. I want more money. I want more status. None of those things are wrong. None of those things are wrong. But let's, let me give you Solomon's answer to this question. He said, I want wisdom. And God says, since you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you wisdom along with everything else that you didn't ask for. Do you feel like that in your life today? Are you asking God for wisdom? Spiritual guidance and spiritual wisdom. Because all else is just temporary fleeting things. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. But when you kind of put that above everything else, you don't gain anything else but that. Just like when you're seeking the approval of man, that's your reward. 
So let's go ahead and get into the first Proverbs, just the very beginning of Solomon. The proverb of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Let's stop there already. So King Solomon is the heir to King David. So let's go back a little bit. God promised David that his kingdom, that his throne shall never end. Now, here's why his kingdom would never end. His lineage goes down to Jesus Christ. That's why they call him thou son of David. Jesus is the son of God and the son of David. And his lineage is Jesus' kingdom, God's kingdom will last forever. There will always be an heir on David's throne as long as Jesus is alive. If you've ever heard of the song, Jesus is alive and well, Jesus is not dead. He has risen and is alive forevermore. So, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and, and, and equity. So, These are very important things to know in any situation that you're going through. I'm not telling you it's going to be an easy thing to do. To take God's wisdom and use it in everyday life is the exact opposite of what the world thinks and the world does. So, on your job, you may think, well, I, I know how to do this job. I can do this job better than anybody else. And your boss may be like, nah, I don't really see that in you. Now, it's all in how you react to that kind of situation. The thing is, you may be overlooked. You may feel like that everybody is a lot more successful than you are. But here's the always the key thing to remember is you are a child of God. That you are in the kingdom of God. What are you valuing more over everything else? Because if they overlook you, that is their fault and their problem and pretty much their loss. You always say, I am a child of God. I am a child of the King. Now let me clarify that. I don't want you to just say that, just to say it. You actually need to be a child of the King in order to say this. I'm not telling you to be perfect, but I am telling you you must follow these instructions that are in the Word of God. So, I got some things I got to work on. You got some things you got to work on. We both do. But that's why we are here as children of God. To help each other. Now, there are just some people that you just must stay away from. Because they, they try to use this to take advantage of. And this is a lot of people that try to do this. So that's, that's why it says in the Bible that friends are few. You don't have many friends in this world. Let's look at Jesus, for instance. He only had 12. And one of them betrayed him. These were people that walked closely with him. So in other words, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Now, 
this world has a twisted mentality of justice. This world has a twisted mentality of equity and a twisted uh, mentality of judgment. So the world tends to look at Christianity like it's old, it's no longer relevant. What you guys believed back then is back then. We have a new age Christianity now that believes whatever they want to believe. We have a new age Christianity and something that I just heard uh, this morning that they're referring to God as different pronouns. And this is a bit concerning because these are churches that are doing this. These churches are calling themselves woke church. And it's, it's, it's actually saddening to see. The Bible clearly clarifies God as a he. Although at the same time it does say God is not like man. But he's a he. God's a he. But the thing about it is God tells us not to go around poking holes in other people's religions and things like that. So in other words, don't get in a religious battle with people. That's the furthest thing that the gospel is about. But as far as judgment is concerned, it's based off the word of God. As far as justice is concerned, it's based off of the word of God and what God says that justice is. God, based off of what judgment that God has and said. Now, here's the thing about it. Too many people say, God is judging me for who I am. No, he's not judging you. He knows who you are. He knows who you really are. Underneath everything that you think that you are. Now, a lot of people believe that they're gay, homosexual, you know, homosexuals, and I was born this way and things like that. No. You, no. Because there's no such thing. But people believe that. And that's the thing about current society. It's whatever you believe to be true. Now let me tell you this. I'm just gonna tell you this. If you believe anything else that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again, you're confused. And many would say, oh, you're just closed-minded. Why is that the only thing that I would have to believe? Why can't I just believe that this happened in X and Y and Z? Well, here's the thing about it. There may be a diverse of religions, but there's only one God. Because even in Christianity, there's several forms of Christianity. But we're supposed to be serving one God. There's only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. Believing in Jesus Christ, not only believing, but following his instructions. And that's where wisdom comes in. When you can truly follow God's instructions, in spite of the majority. Solomon did this to a T until he fell from grace, but we haven't gotten there yet. 
to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. So when you can teach the young adults, the young children, this is counted as wisdom. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I have respect for those that have to teach children. Because especially now, when you're coming from a place where parents are teaching their children everything but the word of God. And you have to deal with this. Now, I also have sympathy for the children because they go to the church, they hear this, but then the parents don't believe it. And they fault. They punish the children for trying to believe or have a voice of their own. This happens all the time, and, and that's why children grow up so confused. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So, learn. Get a good education. Get a good education. I myself have some college education. I I didn't I didn't do well in college. I'm gonna tell you that I, I dropped out of college. Um, but get as much education as you possibly can, not to be just smart, but have wisdom. Because I mean, worldly knowledge means absolutely nothing to God. But at the same time, you can use that knowledge to make something of yourself. But here's the thing about it. After you have made something about yourself, be about others. That's something that I want to obtain to do. I don't want to get status just to have status. I don't want to have a high paying job just to have a high paying job. Some of the people that I hear about, like Shaquille O'Neal, that actually gives back to the community with what he has out of everything that he has accomplished, he gives back. I definitely want to be somebody just like that. You know, the reason I even do these videos it's because I want somebody to hear the gospel. I want somebody to hear the truth and make a decision for themselves. I can't force you to do it. I can't make you do it. I can only tell you and you have to make a decision for yourself. And I will tell you this, read the word of God for yourself. Oh, before we move on from that, wise counsel. What is wise counsel? Wise counsel is those that are in the word of God that have a word of knowledge for you. That can speak to your life and make you want to do better. Not make you as in, oh, no, you better do. No. They hear you. And you say, you know what? You're right. I got to do better. I can't stay in this rut that I'm in. I'm going to find a way out and make something of myself. You know, I'm going to say this. Growing up, my mother instilled the word of God in me. And I forgot it. During my teenage years, I completely eradicated the word of God out of my system. And I was into everything but God. But there's always a still small voice in the back of your mind saying, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. And it took some years, but come back, come back. 
come back. And the thing is, eventually in high school, it got so loud to where I just had to say, God, I hear you. And my friends kind of hated me for it. <laughs> they they kind of didn't like me for it because I wasn't, how can I put this, like them anymore. We still hung out, but most of them were atheists, most of them were this and that, that and this, but we were still friends. Even in my classes, I found scriptures in the school books. Now, I'm trying to remember what class this was, but all I know is we did a project and we had to annotate uh, a story in, in, the, in the book. And I found Psalms 98 in the book. Me being a newborn Christian, I'm just like, you know what? Yep. God telling me something? Yep, go for it. And I got an A on the on the assignment just because it was a scripture. And one of the kids said, wait a minute, why is he getting a good grade? He didn't he didn't dress up for it. Yeah, because he he put, he put a scripture. The scripture will open doors. The scriptures will open doors that you do not understand and comprehend. So never take the word of God out of any situation. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care if you're at school. I don't care if you're at home. Keep the scripture in your life. To understand the proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, what does it mean by the fear of the Lord and dark sayings? You don't fear God like people fear the devil. The devil uses fear as in interrogation and I'm over you. No, that's not what God does. But you do understand that God is the one that will tell you where you're going. He will either tell you, depart from me or come, on, or come in my good and faithful servant. In other words, he has the power to put you in hell or put you in heaven. Now let me explain that even further. He gives you free will on earth. He gives you free will on earth, but he is the one that makes the ultimate judgment. So always keep that in mind. You have free will, in other words, he does not put you in chains. He does not put you in bondage like people think that he does. People believe that, well, I can't smoke, I can't party, I can't drink, I can't have no fun at all. So why would I follow a God like that, that, that don't accept me for who I am? Well, the devil will accept you. But here's the problem with that. He doesn't love you. He hates you because you're still made in the image of God. As long as you living and breathing in this world, you are made in the image of God. And the devil hates that because he once had it in heaven. He once had it, but he lost it when he decided that he wanted to be on the throne. And that's the problem with a lot of us today. We want to sit on the throne. 
We want to have control over everything and everybody. Let it go. Let control go. There are some things that you can control. There are some things that you can't. And people is definitely one of them. You cannot control people. Now the fear of the Lord is beginning on but fools despise wisdom and instruction. When they say fools despise wisdom and instruction, they deny God. They deny God's wisdom. They deny God's instructions. I'm not talking about the law of the land. I'm talking about the law of the Lord. God's instructions. When you say I'm not following God, I don't want nothing to do with God. The Bible calls you a fool. Because you're rejecting a loving Savior. Somebody that loves you unconditionally. You're rejecting him. But that's your choice. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Okay. This is a very difficult one for a lot of us. It's because our parents are our, they're our judge and executioner, basically. They're over you, child, children, or grown adult, whichever one. They're still your parents. But here's the thing about that. You obey your parents in the Lord. No, it actually says, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. For length of days shall be added unto your life. So again, this is a difficult matter because a lot of parents are abusive. A lot of parents uh, are heavy drinkers that abuse the, the mother or the other way around the mother's abusing the father or both parents are against the child or one parent's against the child and it's a terrible environment so a lot of us live in broken homes and you want to rebel against your parents you know I don't care what they say I don't care what they do I'm not gonna follow anything they tell me they they not you know why should I do it if they not gonna do it and you know the only argument they're gonna tell you I'm the parent and you're the child guess what don't argue with I'm going to tell you this, if you don't like it, if you don't like their instruction, you don't like living under their house, don't. Because you're just going to be miserable. And this is how we end up with a lot of children on the street, on their own. Now, this could go up two ways. Either the parent was right and you were wrong, or you were right but you still can't say anything because they're the parent. It doesn't matter if, you're, you, if you were right. In God's sight, you're still wrong. We have gotten so far away from the old days where children have respect for their parents. Now, like I said, nobody's perfect. But uh, let's continue on. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. In other words, 
<laughs> in other words, don't be a teenager. Do, don't go under peer pressure and let them pressure you. Don't let them say, we're going to take blood today. We're going to go kill somebody. Because they disrespected me. You have to be the one to say, no, man, I can't do that. In fact, instead of us doing that, I'm going to invite you to my church. That's some of the hardest words to ever tell somebody. No, nah, man, come, come, come to my church. Come, come hear about this Jesus that saved my soul. No, nah, man, I don't want to hear that. Man, man, get away from me with that. No, 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 I'm telling you. He saved my soul. He turned me around. And the things that I used to do, I do no more. And I didn't save myself, but I did make a choice. Man, man, I don't want to hear that. Well, guess what? If they don't want to hear it, they ain't your friends. Get away from them. Wipe your feet is what the Bible tells. Jesus told his disciples, if they don't want to hear it, wipe your feet and move on. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole. And these that go down into the pit, we shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Casting the lot among us, let us have one purse. My son, let's stop there before we go on to 15. So let's do all kind of evil in the sight of God. Let's all come together as one. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. The devil is not ignorant. Neither is the kingdom of darkness. They come together all the time to steal, to kill, and destroy. Why is it that the children of God is not coming together for love? It's just simply because of our pride. We believe we always have to be right. We believe we have to always have the last word and the last saying. God is more concerned about their soul rather than you being right. You may be right, but still wrong. So basically, they came together as one to steal, kill, and destroy. But look what Solomon is saying next. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. They run to these things. They can't wait to do it. I'm just, I wake up in the morning to this. This is my daily bread that I have is to kill, to steal, and to destroy, to run out, and to, to, to rob this person, to kill this person, to just talk about this person. This is what gets me off. Don't run to that. Stop and think before you do. Before you make that decision, stop and think. Would I want somebody to do this to me? Wisdom crieth without, she utters her voice in the streets. 
she crieth in the chief place of con concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set a naught in my counsel and with none of my reproof. Okay. So, this is God talking. This is Solomon talking on behalf of God saying, How long will you let yourself suffer? How long? When you let this go on, I'm showing you every single day that you are wrong. I'm showing you every single day that this is the result of your actions. But you don't believe this is God. You hear some preachers sometimes say this, God, is this you? Is this, is this you doing this? No, 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 it has to be the devil. No, it's God reproving you, child of God. You are called for better. You are called for better. You know, there are some people that can get away with anything. You are not one of them. If you did the same exact thing as somebody in the world, you would get caught immediately. simply because you're better than that. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear come, cometh. When your fear cometh in desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall call, they call up, let's stop before we get to that part. So God is saying, I'm laughing. I'm not the cause of it. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> this is a decision that you made. This is a dumb choice that you made. I'm just sitting here waiting for you. Yeah, he's laughing. Because it is funny. It may not seem funny to you, of course. But he didn't tell you to make that choice. And that's where we get testimonies a lot of the times because of dumb decisions that we have made. And they, and they said, they say, I can laugh at it now. I couldn't, I couldn't do it back then, but now when I die, I look back on it. It was a pretty dumb choice and now I can laugh about it. They sh then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they were none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of simple, of simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearketh unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So in other words, the only reason why they're calling on God now is because they got in trouble. God, get me out of this situation. I, 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 did, I didn't mean it. Yeah, they meant it. They just got caught. See, there's a difference between you doing a 180 and just fear of getting caught. God don't hear that. When you just worried about, will I get caught? Nah, he doesn't hear you. He doesn't hear your prayers. He doesn't hear your cry for help. No, he's completely putting a deaf ear to you. And some people don't understand that. But, well, God, wait, I'm, I'm calling on your name, but you don't hear me? No. 
Nope, I don't hear you whatsoever. If you calling on the Lord just because you don't want to get in trouble, nobody wants to hear that. Man doesn't want to hear that. God does not want to hear it. Nobody does. But for those that are truly, truly sorry, those that are truly trying to walk with God, yeah, he hears your prayers. You hearken unto his instruction. Just like myself, I turn the deaf ear to him. I didn't want anything to do with him. I, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I wanted to believe in whatever I wanted to believe. The thing is, as much as I did do as a child, there were just some things that I would not do. Because there was always the word of God in the back of my mind. And he just brought me back to it. He just brought it back to my remembrance. But if you've never heard the word of God, and you just saying, oh God, or just saying, God, I need you. No, it's not in your heart. You're just saying words. But Solomon, again, was a wise man in God's sight, simply because he asked God for wisdom and, and God gave it to him. So, brothers and sisters, we are asking for God's wisdom on today. Say that with me. God, give me your wisdom. And then everything else after that shall follow. But you must adhere to the instructions of these words before anything else will come your way. So brothers and sisters, this is your opportunity to give God a chance. This is your opportunity to bring a new way of living into your life. Accept him today. Give him a chance to change your life for the better. It's going to seem hard because it is hard. But you're not alone anymore. You may lose all your friends that you had in the world. But you gained so much more in Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again for my sins so that I may be forgiven and have a right to the tree of life. I always remember that it's not because of your good deeds or your good works, but the finished work of the cross. So, Father God, we thank you right now, Father, for, for King Solomon that you have given us for wisdom and knowledge right now, Father. This is godly wisdom and godly knowledge that we desperately need in this world today, Father, because there are so many people that are confused right now, Father, that just don't know, Father. Some people don't know, some people do know, but do the opposite anyway. Touch these people's hearts, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So thank you, brothers and sisters, once again for joining me and learning the Bible with me. And I'll see you again next Sunday.